Welcome to BW Business World. Today we are here at BW Marketing World's D2C Summit 2023. I have with me Mr. Rishi Vasudev, who is co-founder of Goat Brand Labs. Welcome, sir. Thank you. We are here to discuss, of course, the uh, growth of D2C sector in India and what lies ahead. Uh, you carry a rich experience, uh, work with uh, established many, many established brands. Uh, tell us what are some of the strategies that are working well in favor of even the new gen uh, uh, startups, if I can say. Yeah, so I think uh, the traditional strategies of being very clear that what your brand stands for, mm -hmm. what problem are you solving for the consumer, mm -hmm. I think uh, that that irrespective of whether you are in a traditional company or a new age company, stands ground or that's kind of the base on which you build. It's just that uh, new age customers now have a direct access to consumers, mm -hmm. right? Which earlier they, used to, they had to go through distribution partners to reach the consumer. Now today they have that access and therefore the way they take this message of the brand to the consumer is changing and that's what is the evolution all about. Uh, you are you have worked in lifestyle or let's say fashion industry the most and you have uh, you have that uh, if I can say in a positive way that bias towards lifestyle and fashion uh, what potential do you see there and how will that sector evolve uh, going forward so I have a bias because something that you do over many years uh, you get a sense of that or you get instincts around that but the good news is that uh, fashion is going to be the biggest market uh, by 2030, the projections are that fashion will be bigger than mobile phones in terms of uh, online sales. And, and therefore, the next 10 years are going to be very, very interesting and very, very enriching for all the startups in the, uh, or all the people trying to disrupt the market in the fashion space in online. And, and therefore, we, we are very gung-ho about this category and therefore focusing a lot on it. Good to know, good to know. In January, you acquired five brands that uh, that's similarly lies in, into this space uh, only lifestyle and fashion. Uh, do you also plan to acquire brands who are into other categories as well? Just because we are seeing that most of the categories like fashion, beauty care, personal care and consumer electronics are the major chunk of the D2C sector. But still, there are many, many other sectors that's emerging. Let's say pet care, let's say climate tech products. Do you plan to go further into various categories as well? Yeah. A large part of our focus happens to be on fashion, but mm -hmm. uh, since we are building capabilities which are digital first, mm -hmm. and uh, we believe that we, have, we understand the e-commerce ecosystem much better than uh, a lot of others out there, and therefore our bets have been in fashion as well as non-fashion categories. Uh, I don't know if you know, but two of our brands are in pet care. Mm -hmm. So we have Doggy Dabba, which is a pet food brand, and we have Pet Crux, which is the number one seller Lovely. of cat litter on Amazon. So we have a few bets there, but mm -hmm. largely we believe that there's a larger opportunity in fashion, uh, and that's where we are out to create the really large outcomes. Uh, good to know. Good to know. Uh, you, you are, you are uh, I mean, high on the say that e-commerce would help brands to scale faster, uh, especially in India, and D2C specifically, uh, I mean, gives the brand a push which, uh, which can give you a lower head cost. So uh, tell us more about it and how do you see the uh, proposition between D2C being only D2C and of course collaborating with e-commerce giants as well. So last uh, two, three years when there was so much uncertainty, mm -hmm. you know, you saw the whole uh, benefit of being very agile. That means how to keep your costs very low, That's right. a large, of, large part of your costs is variable. Mm. And uh, today India, beautifully, uh, a large ecosystem has built out for D2C, whether it is warehousing, logistics, mm. digital marketing, etc. So you can actually build a whole business without having a very large set of fixed costs in-house uh, by using all of these capabilities that have been curated, which is very different from the traditional uh, setups where everything ended up being in-house mm. and therefore if things are going as per plan you're mm. fine but then the moment you have a slowdown the capacity utilization really falls mm. down right so I think um, that's the whole beauty of D2C and my uh, advice to a lot of D2C founders is that keep it that way that keep because D2C works both ways that's right. you can suddenly scale up 100 times mm. and there are many brands which have in our portfolio which have become uh, 10x from where we acquired mm -hmm. But giving, given this flexibility, you can scale up with all the ecosystem right. partners. Uh, and it could go uh, I, uh, other side as well. Like if you have uh, such black swan events, then you know you suddenly 
it could risk the whole business or you go through a very bad season. Uh, so I think that agility is important, especially when you are going through this scale of volatile growth as well as stagnancy. Uh, however, as you become bigger, you will realize that there are cert certain parts which are part of your differentiation Absolutely. and those are things you should have in-house. But if there are things of parity, then you can use services from others who are offering that. At I agree, I agree. And, and it's, I mean, in this uh, uh, new time, it is important for every D2C brand or rather every brand to be present on new channel just because uh, it will give them a push towards this brand building as well as uh, a push for customer acquisition as well. Uh, talking to you, Rishi Vasudev, as an investor, tell us something about how the capital flow is looking like, just because we are talking in context of funding dryness as well, investors do have uh, the cash reserves. It's just that they're waiting for the right time, uh, wherein they, can, they could see, they could trace the path of profitability within the brands and their solid business models. Tell us how is the capital flow looking like when it comes to the specific due to the sector? So, overall the uh, the capital flow i'm told that in early stage is not dried up there are a lot of deals happening there we are based on the team as well as the uh, size of the market in the opportunity size i think people are putting in money uh, and it's always get it's always good to get into new businesses when things are a little tight because by the time they find their market value proposition the markets would be back but in growth stage companies i think uh, People are much more careful now before uh, committing checks. Unlike uh, the funding summer, if I may use the counter yeah, to funding spring. winter or spring. Or spring yeah. uh, so therefore, people are now more patient. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody is investing with FOMO, saying that, okay, if everybody's putting in money, let me put money. Uh -huh. And therefore, businesses have to be built in such a way that, mm -hmm. you know, even if the valuation happens over six months, mm -hmm. you are ensuring that the path uh, is something that, that is firmly there and you are really moving forward into that path. You can't suddenly be profitable one month and, gay and say I broke even, broken even and now I should raise money. You have to be on that path for many months because people are taking their time to really right. so find the good companies. Right. Yes, that's yes. Right. I think that's the big change. But good businesses will continue to attract capital because there is capital available. Any, any season of the winter yeah, yeah the capital lying idle is not useful so people would want to invest but not in a hurry as as fast as what it was happening. So there is more rigor right now, yeah? Yes, more rigor. In your observation, how would D2C in India shape up in 2023, let's say, or beyond in upcoming years? Hmm. What would you say? So I think uh, the, the fact that D2C allows a lot of people to come up with new business ideas is really the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there are a few big ones who have made it uh, and there are a few ones in the middle and a long tail I think that curve will start moving towards more and more brands which That's attain a certain size. So, uh, like I keep saying that in the past you would look at 1000 crore companies, mm -hmm. but in the D2C world you can you should look at many 100 crore companies, right? Because uh, because a 100 crore company built with very, very low overheads is, mm -hmm. is a good first target for many companies. So, I think there will be many 100 crore companies which would then be ready to leap and take a 1000 crore uh, target. Uh, but then this whole curve will keep moving up and seeing those 100 crore companies, there will be hundreds of new companies on hundreds of new people entering the entrepreneurship world to really go direct to consumer because it is breaking the entry barriers, right? D2C means that you don't have that entry barrier of going direct to consumer, right? Yeah, so, right. Um, yeah, so therefore and you adding, will see adding many to more it, brands. Of course, adding to it, social media and other media platforms are also helping brands to go borderless yes. with their customers. Yes. Yeah. yes, exactly. So it's not only distribution, but also in terms of how you communicate to consumers. That's right, content. You don't yeah. have to really spend on huge advertising to reach consumers. You can talk directly to them through your social media pages. So I brands think. are also adopting the way of content to customers right now, uh, which is giving them the organic reach for the customers. Thank you so much for Thanks. joining nice us, Mr. Vasudev. It was a lovely conversation. Thank, Thank you. you.